Hi and welcome to another Photoshop editing tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how I restore a rather underexposed image like this one. Plus, I will be adding some very warm, dreamy color grading. So if you want to follow along, you can find the link to download the raw file in the description of the video. And now let's begin. So here we are in the camera raw editor. You can see this shot is quite heavily underexposed. Looking at this again, this is also pretty clear right there in the foreground. I was shooting against the light, so we also have some overexposure present. With the modern day raw file like this, you can almost always fix those situations in the raw editor. So first off, I'm going to change the profile to Adobe Landscape. This will already almost fix the underexposed areas, but it also adds some more saturation to the image. Next up, let's open up the basic panel and I'd like to adjust the white balance next. At the moment, this image does have a very, very heavy purple color cast. Might be okay for sunrise images, but I really don't like how it looks on this scene. So first off, I'm going to drop the temperature, making this whole shot a little colder. And to fix those purple tones, I'm going to drop the tint quite a bit, which will also introduce some more yellow tones to the image at the same time. So here we get a pretty good result. Now let's work on the exposure itself. First off, my goal is to fix the darkest areas. I'm doing this by simply raising the exposure, just keeping an eye on those shadows in the foreground. Of course, I don't want to overdo that and make it look totally unnatural. I think that's a good spot with still having some deep shadows in here. Of course, raising the exposure will make the overexposure problem in the sky bigger. So to counter that, I'm simply going to drop the highlights, which fixes most of the problems. Now, this area is still very bright, but I think we can work with that and just use it as some more contrast. Next up, let's try and raise the shadows just a bit. Trying to get out some more details from the dark parts, but I think that's looking like a pretty solid exposure at the moment. Again, checking the histogram, you can see over and under exposure both are gone, so that is great. The final thing I want to do in the basic panel is to just add a little bit of texture, making the shot a lot sharper. At the same time, I'm going to drop the clarity and I'm also going to drop the dehaze, which helps to get this dreamy effect. So that's looking good. Then let's pump up the vibrance. And I'm also going to increase the saturation. Perfect. And that is the image just after a few basic adjustments. Here you can see the before underexposed version, while here we have a very nicely exposed image, which at the moment lacks some colors. But first off, let's continue with a bit of masking. I do want to further increase the exposure around this area right there. So I'm using a radial gradient. Let's create a rather small one like this and I'm going to rotate it to fit the direction of the boat. Let's maybe make it a little smaller. I think that looks good. And in here I'm simply going to bring up the shadow some more. I'm also going to increase the whites. And that looks almost perfect. Then I do want to work on the very near foreground, which I want to slightly darken. So I'm going to create a linear gradient, just drag it up like this. I don't want to affect too much in here, but this is looking like a good mask. In this case, I'm bringing down the whites. Since bringing down the exposure, for example, would end up with some underexposure in those darker areas down here. So by bringing down the whites, we're still on the safe side. Then I'm going to create another linear gradient just for the sky up here, which I want to darken. And I try to not affect those shadows. So I'm going to just drop the highlights and I'm also going to drop the whites. Perfect. Finally, let's add some more glow and color to the sunrise area on the left. Here I'm using a radial gradient, make it rather big this time. And I'm going to use this one to just add some colors to this area. And I'm doing this by clicking on this little hidden box right there. Here I want to have an orange color tone. 
So that looks like a good hue. For the saturation, we could push it some more just to make the color a little more visible, but I really like this effect already. Next up for the glow, I am going to use another radial gradient. This time, of course, I'm making it a little smaller and I'm placing it right over the forest in the background. Here I'm bringing up the blacks and that's it for the glow effect. And also that's it for the masking. Let me turn off the masks really quick so you can see the difference. You can see we have shaped the light a little more, especially in the foreground and in the top part, leading the eye more towards the center and the boat and thus just the subject of the image. Now let's work on the colors. I'm starting in the color mixer and here I'm going straight to the hue. At the moment we still have some rather strong purple color tones which I'd like to fix. And the first thing I'm doing is to just bring down the purple hue, introducing some of blue tones this way. And I'm also going to drop the magenta tones just a bit and bring up the red hue. Those changes will just reduce the purple color cast and give the image some more orange and blue tones as I said. Next up I'd like to bring down the yellow hue for even more orange tones. That's looking great. Now let's switch over to the saturation tab. Here I'm going to bring up the reds, orange, yellow and maybe even the blue tones. Perfect. For the luminance, we could go ahead and just bring down the blue tones, making the sky and the foreground just a little darker. All right, that looks great. Then we do have the split toning. Here, let's start with the highlights. As most of the times, I'm going to use the highlights to add a warm color tone to the image. So let's choose the hue first and then bring up the saturation a lot. That looks great. Now let's head over to the midtones. Again, I'm going with a very warm color tone, somewhere in this range, and bring up the saturation. Awesome. Finally, for the shadows to add some color contrast, I'm going with a cold color tone, and I'm using a rather low amount of saturation like this. Perfect. Finally, there is a little bit of color grading left in the calibration tab. And as most of the times, I'm going to bring down the blue primary hue, which will make those sunrise colors a little more intense. And I'm also going to bring up the saturation here. Great. Now all that's left to do is the sharpening in the details tab. So let's do that real quick. Bring down the radius, increase the details, add some masking. That's looking like a good spot. And I'm going to pump up the sharpening. And here we have the image after the raw adjustments. That was the original raw file, very underexposed and with a very ugly color cast. And that's the image after just a few raw adjustments. Much better, but we can enchance it somewhere in Photoshop. So let's hit OK and open it up there. So next, I think I do want to make the shadows in certain areas a little darker. I'm doing this by applying some burning so let's create a new layer and switch the blending mode to overlay. Now to target those shadows, I'm using the TK panel plugin, which is a paid plugin, but there's a free version available with all the functions you need to do the same thing. As I said, I want to target the shadows and for the shadows, we do have those dark buttons on the left side. Let's go through them real quick. That's too much, still too much. A little better, but I think I need to go even further. Actually, no, let's go with the darks free mask and I'm going to activate the layer mask mode and click on darks free. Now we have the layer mask on our overlay layer and I'm just picking up the brush by pressing B. And you can see I have set the brush opacity to around 30%. Otherwise this effect would be a bit too strong. Now with the black brush, I'm just going to paint in some vignetting effect, trying to get the focus more on the boat. And also let's paint in some darkness at the very top in the sky. That looks pretty good. Then I do want to add some more warm color tones. In this case, let's head to the adjustment layers down here and just use the photo filter adjustment layer. 
As you can see, this works pretty good. I don't think I need to adjust anything with this adjustment layer. So let's continue. For the next step, I do think I want to make the whole shot a little darker. So let's try use a curve adjustment layer. Just bring down everything very, very slightly to add some mood to this image. This looks pretty good except for the boat in the foreground. So I'm going to make use of the curves layer mask. And again, just using a black brush. So I'm going to bring up the opacity all the way and I'm just going to brush over the boat to make this brighter again. All right. Now we could use the curves adjustment layer to also add some more red color tones. In this case, let's go to the drop down menu and choose red. Here I'm going to take the point for the highlights and just slightly drag it to the left, introducing some more red tones. All right. And at this point, I am pretty much done with the editing. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting as always. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.